Hello everyone, and welcome to Etalan. Starting out the new year, one of my resolutions was to learn to draw again. But specifically, I really wanted to learn to create digital art. If you're not familiar with me or my work, hello, welcome, I'm Etalan and I make dolls. And I almost never draw. I haven't had an active sketchbook since I was in school almost a decade ago, and I haven't completed a drawing or a painting in almost four to five years. But I want to learn to draw again, and hey, you might even come along and draw with me. It's providence, if I've ever seen it, that I was reached out to by German and asked if I wanted to review their PD1161 pen display drawing tablet. Full disclaimer, of course, while they did send me the tablet for free, I'm not sponsored by them, so of course I will be giving my honest opinion on the tablet. Unboxing time. So the PD1161 drawing tablet has an 11.6 inch screen at 1920 by 1080 p resolution. This section of the video was filmed over a week ago, so I've had quite a play with this tablet. And I've come to find that it's the perfect size for me personally. I never found myself wishing for a bigger screen, or did I feel boxed in at my desk, which is really good. After removing the protective layer, the screen appears to have a paper-like quality to it. This system also comes with built-in buttons on both the tablet and on the pen, which is battery-free. I didn't think I would use the buttons that much when I was unboxing this tablet, but after resetting the controls to buttons that I use normally when I'm doing 3D modelling, things like undo, redo, eraser, I ended up using them quite frequently. This tablet isn't a freestanding system like an iPad, if that makes sense. Um, it does have to connect to a computer, but I think that that's pretty standard for this kind of hardware. The software itself is really easy to install though. Right, let's get into drawing. So as I want to have a sketchbook, I wanted to create the front page art for when I open the sketchbook. And what better thing to draw than a little lo-fi self-portrait. Inspired of course by Chilled Cow's Lo-Fi Girl, which has really created a genre of its own. But as well inspired by Ghibli, which ironically played as the groundwork for the Lo-Fi Girl style in the composition, tone and colouring. For my self-portrait, instead of studying at a desk, I'll have the drawing creating a doll space. Because, you know, I'm a doll maker. Scanning it in and booting up the drawing software, it's time to start creating. The software I'm using is the Goman Driver and Clip Studio Paint. First things first, I need to fix up the anatomy of this drawing. I forgot to give myself a neck. Whoops! <laughs> That's the really good thing about digital art though, compared to traditional art. Mistakes can be quite an easy fix, which is fantastic. Do excuse the somewhat mishmashed formatting of this drawing though. I guess that's to be expected when you're trying out something new. But to start out, I'm just going to be going over the drawing with some really rough line sketches and colouring later on. And I'll just fix it up as I go along, I guess. Truth be told, I did get, I suppose I was going to say kind of, but very stroppy throughout this drawing process. My toxic trait is definitely getting upset and self-defeatist when I'm not immediately good at something. But also that I'm stubborn as a mule when it comes to making things perfect. So if you think about it, the toxic kind of balances out for chaotic harmony in an awful way. <laughs> Something that I get asked about a lot is my art history. Did I go to art school and such? Um, while I wish I could say I have a very exciting art history, I, I don't. <laughs> I did art in high school where I picked up watercolour in my last year, but after getting into college and later going to university, I just 
didn't have time to do it anymore. It was only when I was doing my internships and work placements three or four years later that I started it up again. I kind of was looking for a creative outlet. With my watercolour, I focused more on doing distressed and monochromatic paintings, but I rarely shared them online. It was more of an outlet for me, um, more of a way to just kind of be expressive, so I was a, quite a lot more private about that. Um, but what I did share online is, I think, still on my personal account. I'll pop it up on screen if I end up finding them. Uh, who knew that watercolour could radiate so much angst? <laughs> oh my gosh. But one day, I just stopped altogether. And I haven't picked it up again since. All my watercolour supplies are packed away in boxes, just gathering dust. Sounds sad, but I like what I do now. Maybe I'll pick it up again sometime in the future, who knows. But unfortunately that's it. <laughs> that's all my history. It's so interesting looking back when you're actively doing art, compared to when you're on a hiatus. It's interesting seeing how quickly you can lose the skills that you gained when you're not using them. They always say that the creative mind and your skills should be seen as a muscle. If you take that time out of your day or your week just to sit down and work that muscle, eventually it'll just get stronger and stronger. While I find my drawing abilities to be quite shocking, I didn't even know if I really wanted to share this with you all. But it'll only get better over time if I practice, right? What about you though? What kind of art do you do? Are you looking to start a new medium? Maybe it's digital art too, or sculpting? Let me know in the comments below. Considering I don't draw very often, and I rarely draw down my designs and plan out a doll before I even attempt to create it, I'm surprised I've gotten this far. <laughs> I mean, do keep in mind that I am self-taught. I definitely consider my work to be a falling upwards type situation if that makes sense. I feel like you can only get so far when you're imagining a design, you know? Designing and planning out really is kind of like budgeting for the difficulties of creation planning for failure before the failure even happens, and grounding us in our own abilities. There was two instances last year really stirred me in wanting to create again and learn how to draw. First was trying to create a Dungeons and Dragons doll. I'm obsessed with computer RPGs, so I really wanted to make a doll inspired by the adventures of your party in the Baldur's Gate 3 game, specifically when they go into the Underdark. Dungeons and Dragons characters are very fantasy based, so obviously you'd need to plan that out, right? Well, I didn't. The first try on the doll, two weeks of work, scrapped. Come back, a couple weeks later, spend four days painting, and then another two days painting again. Scrap that one. Then, at the end of last year, I thought I'd try again. Third time's the charm, am I right? And scrapped. The absolute curse that that tiefling holds, oh my gosh. I'm, I'm kidding, of course. What we call that, kids, is poor project management. I think if I was to create it again, oh wait, I'm, I'm definitely displaying the toxic stubbornness. Um, anyway, if, I was to try that again, I definitely would have to plan it out to a T. I don't think I could fail again for the fourth time. I mean, come back in a couple of months and I'll be eating my words, I guess. The second time that made me want to learn again was the space collab that I did last year with amazing artists and Chintarian, Delightful and Dolinx, where I made Eris. I definitely think that working with other artists and seeing their process really inspired me. It was bittersweet when we were sharing ideas of our creations. Having them share their absolutely gorgeous concept art 
And then I, I had to draw something and I submitted this. It was the best that I could do at the time. It was only being incentivized by those creations that I gave drawing a try again. And it helped me so much in my work. And in the end, I feel as if it really pushed me in my design work, which is amazing. Like I said, I've been playing around with this tablet for about a week to be able to get a proper feel for the hardware and how it performs. This tablet retails at 199 USD on Amazon. Yeoman as well actually has also given us a $30 off coupon for channel viewers as well, which is amazing. Obviously this tablet runs on the more price effective end of the spectrum when it comes to drawing hardware which definitely made me keen to try it out. I've stated on my channel before that when I started creating dolls, I was going on about two years of unemployment after finishing my studies, only ever getting unpaid positions or grunt work. Knowing myself back then, saving up $500 minimum for a drawing tablet just wasn't an option, nor is it an option for a lot of people. Whether being on a tighter budget, still being in school, being new to the hobby, or whatever it is. Getting into a hobby like digital art still has a very large financial gap to entry. I personally just find it important to show the diversity in pricing when it comes to art supplies. But after trying out this tablet, as well as other tablets, I was pleasantly surprised in how well it actually held up. I never personally experienced any lag with this tablet. If the pen became off center, it would be easy to rectify. You just hold it at a 90 degree angle and the tablet would just calibrate it in like one second. As well, I was able to try out various different pen pressures. The only con I personally experienced with this tablet is that it's just sold as is, which is pretty standard for a lot of brands. What I mean by that as a con is that the drawing tablet will sit flat on the table, which ended up being quite uncomfortable over time for my carpal tunnel and my back. By the end of the week, I started just propping it up um, on a slight elevation on my keyboard, just so that I could get that sort of rest and respite for my back and wrist, which is definitely not ideal. I definitely think it's an almost guaranteed investment on top of the tablet's price to get one of those angled stands for tablets and laptops so that you're able to sit with proper support. Proper posture is really, really important. You know, it's like having a proper chair. It's fine for a short while, you won't notice any issues, but over time you'll definitely start to experience the discomfort and pain. And we definitely don't want that. So something I gave up on pretty quickly was creating the room design. Not out of laziness by any means, I promise, but more from the stance of trying to be less ambitious, especially considering this is the first drawing back. Um, I really should reel in my expectations. To compensate for that though, I decided to use some digital brushes that I bought on ArtStation to create this little rectangular framing thing. I'm not really sure on the terminology, unfortunately. I'm not really sure why, but my screen recording software lightened the video, so you can't really see the background all that much. But nonetheless, here I'm just adding some clouds and botanical stamps for an overgrown plant look.
Just by adding those little details in, I think this drawing is done. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this drawing in the comments below, and let me know what skill you want to pick up for the new year. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below, I would truly appreciate it so much. A huge thank you as always to my patron supporters. A huge thank you as well to Gurman for sending me out this tablet. If you yourself want to check out more about this tablet and see the $30 off discount, the link will be in the description below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.